All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. Uh, ugly Fed day. Um, I think for the most part, just pretty much in line with what we've seen uh, before with Fed days, just nastiness. Uh, this Powell, what was I tweeting before the... Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, the market just, this is not anything new. I would say every time he's spoken, unfortunately, this is this has been the market reaction. So no change in trend. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, we've got trends all over the place, right? And, you know, there's been a trend with every time Powell speaks, this guy, this market does not like the way that he comes off. And um, so it was pretty true to form. We had this, uh, we had this reaction, you know, a little bit about today's price action. Uh, you know, this is something that we that we've talked about. But, um, you know, it, to me, it was a short covering rally. And that's fine, right? You can make money if you're if you're day trading, and you're fully unaware of that. And that's something that I try to um, that I try to communicate is as best as possible with the way that this market has been reacting. You know, I mean, it's not normal, right? Um, normally when there's, when there are Fed meetings, what normally happens is kind of a choppy market, um, not much action uh, leading up into the event. And, um, and the VIX usually rises in, is an anticipation of the event. That's really not, I mean, this is the opposite. And, and, you know, I kind of picked up on this a couple other, fed uh meetings but the vix is selling off all day today that's not really how it's supposed to work remember how the vix works right it's it's kind of like the implied volatility into an earnings event uh and same thing when you have an fomc or some other widely expected event what normally happens is the vix rises into the event and once the event is over then the VIX starts to sell off, right? It's kind of a like buy the rumor, sell the news. And once the news is out there, whatever it is, uh, positive or negative, usually the VIX sells off, right? Because again, it's you know uncertainty going into an event, um, VIX rises. And so this is what happened all day today. The VIX went down. This is a, that was like the first sign for me today that I'm like, I don't like that at all. The VIX is not supposed to sell off going into an event. So what is that? What did that mean to me? That everything that was going on today was just short covering. Um, it, it's not new investment. Um, you know, so short covering rallying to the Fed and, this, and you know, you could, you could certainly write this down. I mean, but this is what's been happening every time this guy, every time that there's an FOMC event, the market rallies a little bit uh, because shorts are covering. Um, and then once it happens, shorts are reasserting themselves, um, you know, pretty decently. So that's that's my take. And that's been my take for the last couple of these meetings, these Fed meetings. So what, you know, what did I do today? Very little. Um, I just, I don't really have an appetite to short down here uh, with this market doing what it's doing. Um, I think we are due for a relief balance, uh, relief bounce. But I'm just not really positioning myself uh, too much. I'm, I've been saying that, um, you know, uh, respecting your money and your cash is, is, is capital preservation is paramount. And I've been saying that ba basically the last couple of days in, my, in our uh, recap that I send out uh, to, to members. So, um, yeah, so this is starting to get oversold. I mean, notice that we're just not as oversold as we were back here. So that's also a sign that the, that it, why we haven't really received, have, why we haven't gotten a balance is because the indices are not um, oversold according to the RSI. All right, so if we go over to IWM, let's see what the RSI is on it. By the way, this gave, an, uh, you know, this gave a heads up signal today. I, and I'm actually surprised we've gone past this version point of control, but it, it is what it is. Um, there's just a lot of selling pressure. Usually these version point of controls, uh, you know, unless it's something really unusual, uh, you know, and, unless it's something really unusual, sorry, I'm just reading a text. Um, and, and unless it's something really unusual, like now, uh, you usually get a reversal back, but um, we're not even seeing this. But again, you know, back here, back on the, um, the October lows, the relative strength RSI was what, a tw was a 24? Really got oversold there and we bounced. We're not, um, I get, sorry, I guess it's a 24 now. All right, what was it down here? Oh, it was like a 15 and that's where we bounced. You know, burned off those overbought levels, got oversold again, 
burned off those overbought levels and uh, you know really didn't get past the 50 line here in the RSI so it's it's uh, it's it's a nasty sell-off it is a nasty sell-off um, so that's IWM IWM and again kind of gave the leading indicator today it was the first one to take out the lows if you kind of look at the timing of when this happened uh, I did not like that at all and um, you know sure sure enough we kind of really um, broke down pretty decently so the other things that also gave the hint for today which on fed days um, the dollar is a good indicator the do I mean these are all things that should not have been happening this morning <laughs> was the uh, the dollar selling off into the event um, and notice that we basically finished back to flat we're up to 26 again in the dollar um, again the dollar goes stronger um, you know, my, I could talk about Powell and give you my opinion on Powell. I, I don't think this guy gets it, but, um, this is what he's been doing all along. Um, you know, he had the one speech that people took as dovish, but I don't know. I, I think he will, he will grasp that the market, you know, and I know we're very focused on equities, but clearly all he's had to do is listen to a couple of these, um, earnings calls. From companies, I don't know if this guy is lazy and not doing. So again, I I knew I knew I was going to turn turn a corner and talk negative about him. I mean, how can you not? I, I don't really understand. I'll be interesting to hear Kramer tonight on CNBC. Probably will go off on this guy as well, but it just doesn't seem like this guy's doing his homework. I don't know how you could raise interest rates when you listen to the FedEx call where they're talking about how much you know globally. So sure, it may not be we. St the U.S. still may be the best house on the block, but, you know, companies that are, and this was definitely a concern of Yellen's, um, was international growth, and they kind of took a more uh, wait-and-see approach, making sure that there was that synchronized growth. And now that, the, that you know, globally markets are falling apart, I, I don't know what this guy's looking at. Uh, I don't, you know... <laughs> So, so it is kind of, you know, even though it's the, the, we saw the repeat action today, repeat price action, um, all the indicators today showing that today was going to end up the same way as other FOMC meetings. Uh, but this guy is still, seems to be pouring gasoline on, 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 you know, what's, what is a fire that's starting. So I, I, I don't get it. I don't really understand what this guy is looking at. High yield bonds are crumbling at this point. Um, the HYG was down nine. So I, I don't, what is he? I, and I wish that the people in the press conference would ask him more questions. Like, what do you, are you not looking at high yield bonds at this point? Um, <laughs> I don't know what this guy's doing. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, it is what it is. And this is what we're, this is what we're, so, you, you know, we could blame him for this. Um, but you can only can, can control what you can control. So I've been in, you know, mostly in cash. Um, and that's basically what I've been advocating, even though I can't give any advice or recommendations. But I think with this going on, and clearly this guy doesn't get it. Um, so you, you can't, and if he's not looking at, you know, and again, I'm more focused on equities. I do look at everything macro, but I mainly trade equities. Um, and I look at a lot of macro things like the dollar and interest rates. I mean, look at TLT today, by the way, um, up 1.3%. I mean, bonds are ripping. Um, you know, I've been talking about all the inflows going into the short term. So, you know, my point is we can't control the Fed and, you know, we can only control what we can control, which is how we're trading, how we're positioning and so forth. So, I mean, I do think that we are we are starting to get oversold. If I said overbought earlier, I apologize. But oh, we are starting to get oversold. But uh, and still, I mean, this is to me not a place to, you know, just like when you're just like in a solid uptrend. Even when we get overbought, um, when we were overbought in an uptrend, do I really want to short? You know, go, when we're overbought in an uptrend? No. So I don't really want to buy when we're in a downtrend um, significantly either. Um, you know, a couple names that I've been watching the last couple days, I think I thought Google. So I could um, let me go through the rest of the charts. So we did take out um, and then I'll talk a little bit about single stocks. I'll talk about the option flow. I'll get me all riled up talking about option flow. 
Uh, but um, S and P also took out a version point of control today, so we are taking out these these levels that I think are important. But um, you know we are going down pretty fast. And notice again we're, we've, we're 28 RSI, so you know anything under a 38 is oversold technically, but we're certainly not as oversold as we were here, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it's just it is what it is. Um, that is S and P. Uh, I went over IWM. The Qs I think are the most vulnerable here to 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 continue to go down. Um, I think the Qs could have a lot more. Could have this VPOC to be taken out. Maybe not in a straight line. Um, notice that the, that the Qs are not even oversold yet. So I you know if you were looking for me to be positive and say hey we're due for a bounce. I I mean I don't know I. You know, I try to kind of look at these indicators and kind of make that decision to try to be as objective as possible. Um, but we're not oversold in the queues, and I think they could have more to go to the downside. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, a couple names. We could look at just looking at a few, how a few names have been behaving. I mean, Apple is down another 3% today. Facebook, um, I had a member... I won't say his name yesterday, asked me about Facebook yesterday. I said it is a no touch on the long side. They, they thought it was acting pretty decently. Um, you know, it's a name that we saw call buying last week. And they said that on CNBC, call buying and Facebook. Well, now look at it. Uh, it's down 7%. But, but honestly, I think the, the 50 day moving average was why I didn't want to touch this thing. Uh, I may have talked about that in last, in last night's video. I'm not sure. Um, I didn't short this thing either. I saw a couple of people were, were shorting this thing. That's a nice move. So kudos um, to those who were shorting this into that resistance of the 50-day moving average. But the bottom line is, and I try to tell people this, who want to jump in before resistance is taken out, why not just wait for that confirmation? Um, there was somebody who day traded Facebook, which is fine you know, today. But I just asked, I said, why, why do you want to get into this? before it takes out when it's got a big level of resistance ahead of it but you know day trading is fine and they they clarified that they would not they were not looking at a swing trade and I said okay that's fine day trade is fine but um, yeah I mean you kind of have to wait for a little bit of confirmation I mean I've been looking at Google for the last couple days and it just hasn't triggered so I, I said in yesterday's what I did say in yesterday's video is a lot of browsing and very little uh, actual purchasing and that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, I was looking for AMD to go above 20 bucks. It didn't, so no trade. So a lot of these have been no trades. And I know that's frustrating to kind of put the homework in and take no trades. I mean, I put out a whole bunch of trade ideas in this weekend's newsletter. They just didn't trigger. Um, so I would rather sit on my hands and unfortunately not trade than lose money. Um, so, I, so I talked a little bit about DLT and the dollar as I kind of jump around here a little bit. Very strong. Uh, the money that's been going in, you know, people ask me sometimes, they're like, why do you watch ETF fund flows? Um, this is a good example. They've been pouring money into short-term treasuries. I mean, here's the short-term treasury inflow, right? This is, this is investment, by the way. This is not, this is shares outstanding. Look at what has happened here all the money that is going to the sidelines. Um, and that's been going on all year long, but as you can see this chart, it's really picked up in October. Um, and it's $450 million yesterday were added. Again, this is just yesterday. You know, so going into the Fed, people got, got the hell out of um, this stuff this week. And, you know, I think that's relative in the price action. I mean, that's clearly why we've been seeing the market sell off every day. It's, again, um, you know, it's liquidation. It's not algos. Uh, well, you know, algos contribute, but that's not the root cause. People are liquidating. Um, and it's five, and just in this one, and keep in mind, there's been similar inflows in BIL, Again, this is all stuff I've been talking about for months. BIL, uh, BSV, SHV, they're all showing similar. Um, and if you don't believe me, um, I, 
could certainly pull this up, but this is this is um, PIL outstanding shares. I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at the amount of money that's been going in. So this is, again, it's like three or four of these short-term. This is T-bill, the T-bill ETF. Now, people are not going in there for the yield. They're going in there to hide. So anyway, that's been going on now for a while. And at some point, this cash will be redeployed. But I, I got to wait for confir some confirmation before I really stick my neck out. Um, so I went over Facebook. Uh, Google has been interesting. It's kind of stopped. It does, has not taken out the lows. I would call that a little bit of relative strength. Does it make me want to jump into Google? No. But um, I will I will wait for the turn. Um, Amazon was down another 3.6%. You know, so, so what would I be looking for? Basically the 50-day moving average. Maybe the top of value. I would be looking for the turn. But notice how Google's been... You know, one bar over the 50 um, and failure here, failure there, failure today. I had to sit on my hands today because I, I was, I'll tell you, and it's tough. It's tough to sit on your hands because Google's a tough day trade. The options are really, you know, they're wide. But I had to sit on my hands all day today and watch Google go, you know, not all day, but I'm like, I'm, well, first of all, this happened very quick in the first 20 minutes of the day. And I'm like, well, I'm not chasing it up here. No way. <laughs> Salesforce was also strong at the beginning of the day and just completely falls apart. So again, this is not, um, the reason why I'm going through a couple of these examples, this is not how trading should work. Like if you're trying to position on the long side, you, you don't want to see this. This the, To see the price action like that, just turn. Now, of course, we had an event today, but the market's been doing this for weeks. Maybe not as dramatic as today. Um, and then finally, gold. Gold really moves on um, FOMC days. I traded a little bit of nugget in the beginning of the day, but man, look at this thing. Uh, this was gold. GDX finished down 5.4%. I mean, that's about a 7% swing. And I traded a nugget in the beginning of the day, and good thing I took my stop and got out of it. It's tough to take a stop, right? I mean, I took the stop here, which was too late. But good thing I didn't hold this thing through there. Um, option activity. Very much two-way. I don't even have this fully updated because I, as I was explaining, uh, we did like a mid midday uh, free FOMC, and I was just saying there's been there's so much uh, two-way flow uh, in the in the spy in the queues. You really can't make heads or tail of it. You try to catch a couple of the really large orders, but um, you know there was this this queues order that we saw being kind of accumulated calls. I think they they threw in the towel. Uh, these were the December 31 calls. Really a bad trade, whoever did this. Uh, I'll have to go, go back and check, but I, I think this was the one that they just added a few days ago. And they sold out of that. Because I remember it was this, they kept buying December 31st calls. And I think they jumped out of that today. Uh, but there was some weekly stuff. Uh, Williams and... Uh, SGMS was the other name if you're into that kind of thing um, with the weeklies. SGMS gave, I guess, you know, some people if they would went into the weeklies right away. But, um, you know, with weeklies, I would say the majority of weekly stuff that we see, um, I would say one out of every 15 of these orders work. Um, the rest just remain, end up being for weekly stuff where you lose the whole premium or you have to stop yourself out at a big loss. I know nobody ta likes to talk about that when they talk about option activity. By the way, I I'm sorry to hammer these guys, but K-Web, right? I just don't think that, that uh, maybe I should say something to them on, on speak up and say something to them on Twitter, but these guys on CNBC who come on and talk about scrambling into to calls, 
uh, it's really, they should be putting some type of statistic about how many of these trades that these guys talk about, unusual option activity, and how many of them completely you lose your whole capital. Uh, I don't know where those calls that they were talking about yesterday, they were jumping up and down, weekly calls in the Chinese internet ETF. Yeah, I think they went up for 75 cents. I think they're marking at 10 cents today. Uh, they should, every time that they mention unusual option activity, they should talk about the win-loss, some type of win-loss ratio. And they should be mentioning that how risky something that you could basically lose your whole investment in one day. <laughs> I don't understand how CNBC gets away with not doing that. Right? And then they'll talk about the one that worked, the one out of 20 that they mentioned that works. Then they'll go back, oh, yeah, well, wow, we did this, great. But, I, you know, the reason why I bring this stuff up is because it's transparency. Um, and it's a shame that they have these guys on, in my opinion, to do this to people, um, to get people excited about thinking everybody, somebody knows something, right? That's the whole thing with option activity. Somebody, oh, somebody must know something. No, that's, that is the outlier. So anyway, um, sorry to end on a, on a negative note. I think for now we just kind of sit tight. I can go over a couple other charts here, but the video is already 20 minutes. Um, XBI is another area that was very weak yesterday. Um, also taking out a virgin point of control to the downside today. How did the financials do today? I don't think so well. Down another 1.2%. Again, these guys were jumping up and down about uh, Citigroup and Morgan Stanley calls on CNBC. How'd that work out for you? Uh, it's a shame that this is allowed to happen. Um, what else did I want to look at? Uh, FDN was finished down 2%. There was nothing. Uh, I was looking at utilities today as a safety trade, but uh, they actually finished in the red too. Again, you think with the move in TLT, utilities might be, uh, you know, an area where there's higher yield, but I think it's a silver risk golf right now. All right, guys. So that's for today. We'll leave it here. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.